Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic, and I've had a thought, or a potential thought. You just saw me build this very, very basic mock-up, and the idea behind this was to try and use speed as a weapon. I reasoned that if I could put a big enough wheel on a 50 to 1 motor, it was going to zip across the table, and then this uh, steering wheel out the front here was... I don't know, it was a little bit of a weird thought that I'd put together from uh, seeing a few bits and pieces online and thought maybe that would work. And then also considering that I could change this out for an Omni wheel or a Mechanum wheel in the future. However, as you saw in the testing footage, this did not work very well. The DF Robot uh, ESC on the back here seemed to be browning out with the energy required to spin this massive wheel and push against the rubber of the actual steering wheel and also uh, push the cutting board along the table because it was contacting on three points. Uh, so yeah, that didn't work very well and I thought, well, maybe I need to add a second wheel. And I realized I've done that already. I have built a robot in the ant weight scale that uses massive, massive wheels. And that is this, Spooky, my mask bot uh, Halloween build from a few years ago now, or yeah, a few years ago now. Anyway, this thing was hilarious, but the main thing about it is it uses 50 to 1 and 20s with these massive wheels, and it does go quite quickly. You need to have the mask in the upright position to take off, because as you take off, it tries to wheelie quite considerably. So I figure what we can do is we can take Spooky here, swap the motors from 50 to 1s to 30 to 1s, uh, remove the mask, add an actual top plate because the mask itself is quite heavy, but other than adding some awesome, awesome character, it doesn't really do a whole lot. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to try yeah swapping this stuff out, adding those DF Robot 30 to 1s instead, and we might either add some bu uh, bumpers off the back so that it stops it from wheeling, or we'll add some downforce. So there we go, super quick rebuild done. This thing is a ton lighter and now probably a ton faster. I haven't tested anything yet. Uh, although I do need to find another 30 to one because the output shaft on this is just a little bit wobbly, which on this massive wheel means it's very, very wobbly. So I might have to uh, shuffle some motors around in my robots to get all of this to work. But as mentioned, this is really, really fast. So it is going to hoik like that as it starts to dry it. Now, I have two ideas for this. The first is the same type of blades that I was using in Downforce. The only problem with that is these things are actually fairly big and it would mean mounting the brushless motor all the way at the very back of the robot, like out here essentially, to actually make it make, like have room to do that. Although with the height of that, we might actually be able to get away with a little bit taller or a little bit further forwards, which would be kind of nice because uh, I'm kind of keen to just keep the same chassis. I don't really want to print anything new, especially with this uh, chassis basically being here and ready to go already. Uh, so I might do that or I could use this, which is a little uh, suction fan setup that was actually off of the wall riding RC cars. Ta-da! We now have a fan underneath, which I have no idea if it's going the right way or not. We're actually literally about to discover this together. Uh, it fits, it works, and we now have another reason to add the extra support out the back here because uh, it would be very, very easy to hit this fan and we do not want that. So, uh, hopefully, I do turn the transmitter on first, turn the robot on. Cool, that's a good start. That's not a good start. Huh. 
Good news, everyone. I didn't give up on the propeller and the fan and everything underneath, and it actually works now. I put a freshly charged battery in. I changed over the ESC to a different one that I had lying around, not really expecting anything. But if we power everything up right now, not only do we now have drive as we had before, but we also have... And not only does it spin up, it also actually works. Have a look at this. This is trying to take off with the robot without the fan on. So as you can see, we get a little bit of a whoop, uh, which is exactly what you would expect. And here is taking off with the fan on. So, it kind of works. It does actually give us a little bit of downforce. It would give us more if I had more holes up through the chassis, which I might do in a future version of this. I'll actually, you know, reprint the chassis and everything for a future version. But for now, it's good enough. Um, and we will just run it as is because it does stop some of that wheeling. I mean, you saw in the video that it like touches the blade to the ground a little bit, but that's not too bad on the whole, especially as the very next thing we're going to do is put some anti-roll bars out the back here. And those anti-roll bars serve two different purposes. One, to stop the robot from slamming the fan into the ground anymore, and also to stop other people from hitting the fan. Because what we're gonna try and do is we're gonna put them where my fingers are and stop people from being able to hit that fan and break it during the course of a fight. And there we have it. I am quite happy with how uh, Spooky Mark II has come out. This has actually come out, yeah, pretty well. I, the fan seems to be doing some kind of job. I think that the stabilizer bars are just a little bit too long, so I'll probably file those down a little bit before the event, just get them uh, a little bit further up off the ground because it seems like they were breaking traction a little bit. Uh, these motors are also uh, kind of wobbly. You can see that the whole robot wobbles back and forth, so I might try and upgrade and update these motors with new uh, N20s because, yeah, these ones, the gearboxes are quite loose, so there's a bit of give and a bit of play in them, which also means it's hard to charge at people, which that's the whole point of Spooky Mark II. So hopefully uh, we can get all that sorted before the event, but that'll be done uh, off camera and, yeah, between now and then, which is actually not very long away. I've only got, like, a week left before the event, uh, but we're good in, in a pretty good position. A lot of robots are mostly together, so I should be a-okay. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed that one, and I will see you in the next video.